Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to make a care plan for your vSIM patient. I know with everything going on in the world right now, a lot of you have switched to online classes and online clinicals and you have been introduced to virtual simulation patients. And these patients are a little bit different, right, than our normal patients and it's a good thing and it's kind of a bad thing too. So I thought I would do an example of a care plan for a vSIM patient. The biggest difference with these patients is you just don't get enough information, right? If this was like an actual real person, you would have notes and notes and notes of information on this patient. This, you only get what you get, right? And that can make it more challenging, trying to figure out what you want to do. But also I think it can make it a little bit easier because you don't have as many choices. <laughs> so. I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process on how to make a simple care plan for your vSIM patient. I am going to move you around a little in this one, that way you can see the board the best, okay? So let's start with our first section. Step number one is taking all of your notes, right? Gathering all of your data on your patient. So our level of consciousness for this example, they were A and O times three, um, their neuro check, now, that's the other thing is you don't get to do all of like the really in-depth things. Like you don't always get to do like the cranial nerve assessment and things like that on your vSIM patient. So you kind of just write down what you can write down. So for our vSIM patient example, we were able to do Perla and then we noticed their speech was clear. So no slurring or inappropriate words. Their GI, we were able to listen to their bowel sounds and it was active in all four quads. Their GU, they are incontinent. Their musculoskeletal, they report weakness. Now, on a real patient, obviously you would be able to test this. You'd be like squeezing my fingers, you know, push against my foot, that kind of stuff. On the vSIM patients, we don't really get that opportunity, depending on what program you have. So we figured out though, that they were expressing overall weakness. Respiratory, we heard crackles in the bases of their lungs. Cardiac. So they had less than three second capillary refill time and their heart was a normal rate and rhythm. Their skin was clean, dry, and intact and they had an IV in their left antecubital. Their vitals, blood pressure 118 over 56, heart rate 76, O2 is 89% on room air, respirations of 24, and then reported a pain of zero. And then the other information we got from the simulation is that they were diagnosed with pneumonia. So this is their medical diagnosis and that they don't have any allergies. So that's what we got to work with. Okay, so this is the information we have to disseminate and decide what's important here. What are we going to use for our care plan in this information? So look for the weird stuff. Okay, look for the stuff that's not normal. So what in here is not normal? A and O times three, not four, right? That's not normal. Maybe we could do something with that. Incontinent, that's not normal. Weakness, crackles, and then their O2 stat, and then their respirations. And if you'll note, that makes a lot of sense because they were diagnosed with pneumonia, right? So a lot of these are symptoms of pneumonia. So maybe we'll focus on that. Let's focus on pneumonia and like respiratory problems, okay? So now we need to go on to our second step. Step number two is forming a nursing diagnosis. Now we're ready to move on to step two. So step one, we've gathered all of our information. We've kind of figured out what's important and what's not. And now we're ready to make our nursing diagnoses. Now, where does this come from? We don't make it up, right? It comes from our book. These have been approved, okay? So these are our approved nursing diagnoses. These are the only ones we're allowed to use. And the book is really, really helpful. Once you get the book down and you understand how to use it, easy, easy. So we've got our book, we open it to the front, and in the front we have a list of like lots and lots of like diseases and conditions and things. So I turn to pneumonia because that was their medical diagnosis. And under pneumonia, I have all of these nursing diagnoses to choose from, okay? So what you have to do is you have to figure out, okay, which one do I think is the most relevant for my patient? Which one do I like the best? So you've got to narrow it down. For example, impaired oral mucous membrane related to dry mouth from mouth breathing and decreased fluid intake. That's a potential diagnosis with pneumonia, but not really relevant to our patient based on the assessment data that we have. 
right? So we're not going to pick that one. We're going to pick one that makes sense. All of our nursing diagnoses have the same formula, which is our problem related to the cause of that problem, which is like the illness, as evidenced by, and then the proof, the proof that this is actually happening to them. Those are our signs and symptoms. So when I went to the book and I saw the potential diagnoses, I decided I liked this one. So I chose impaired gas exchange, so that's our problem, related to decreased functional lung tissue, so that's the cause of the impaired gas exchange, and then our proof as evidenced by how do we know this is happening because we can hear crackles upon auscultation and then their O2 stat is only 89% on room air. So this is our formal nursing diagnosis for our patient. Now we're on to step three. And step three is something that we do without the book. This is one we have to make up on our own given the data that we have. So the outcome is what do we want the patient to achieve? So in our situation, we have the crackles in the lungs, we have the low O2, so we can make those our two outcomes. Patient will have clear lung sounds, and patient will have an O2 greater than 95% on room air. Now we have to write like the formal goal statement, and we have to do this using the formula. There needs to be a subject, a verb, and then a time frame. So for our first one, we took patient will have clear lung sounds and made it a little bit more formal. So patient will have clear lung sounds upon assessment within one week. So we put a time on it. How long do they have to meet this goal? And then our second one, they will have an O2 stat greater than 95 on room air. So our goal statement is the patient will have an O2 stat of 95% on room air by the end of my shift. Now we can move on to step four, which are interventions. So our interventions have to be related to our goals and they have to be related to our nursing diagnoses. And once again, we're gonna use our NANDA book. So we chose impaired gas exchange as our nursing diagnoses, right? So now we're gonna turn to the book to impaired gas exchange. And we're gonna see a lot of information in this part. We're gonna see the definition, we're gonna see the defining characteristics, related factors, and then we're gonna see a ton of interventions. Pages and pages worth of interventions. Pages, okay? So what we need to do is go through those interventions and decide what's best for my patient. Just like when we found that um, mucous membrane thing when it came to diagnoses and we thought, well, that's not really relevant for our patient and we didn't pick it, we need to go through the interventions and decide what's relevant and they need to be related to our goals. So what I chose were auscultating breath sounds every one to two hours and listening for crackles. Why did I choose that? Because our goal is for them to have clear lung sounds, right? How are we gonna know that if we're not listening to their lungs? See how they go together? So this is our intervention and then every intervention has a rationale at the end of it. And this is in your book, right? This is in the italicized uh, words right after. So the rationale is the presence of crackles may alert the nurse to airway obstruction, which may lead to or exacerbate existing hypoxia. And then I have to cite it, okay? Because I didn't come up with it on my own. That's from our book, so we need to cite it. Our second intervention has to do with our O2, right? Because that's what we've been talking about this whole time. So we're gonna monitor oxygen saturation with our pulse oximeter, because how are we gonna know if they've met our goal of getting over 95% if we're not actually measuring it? So our rationale for this one is an oxygen saturation of less than 90% indicates a significant oxygen problem. And then I cited that as well. And all of this is using your book. So once you learn how to use this book, it's gonna be a big help. Now our fifth and final step is our evaluation. And in vSIM, this situation, you can kind of make it up, right? Because they're not real. If you wanna use an intervention you actually did in your vSIM, that's awesome. Then you can put the evaluation for that. 
But if you don't, if you pick something that you want to do later, like we gave a time frame of one week, we're not talking to our VSIM patient for a whole week, right? So our evaluation, you can kind of make it up as best you want. So the formula for this is, was our outcome met? So did we meet our goal? Yes or no? And then what's our proof? What's our proof that we did it? So number one, remember our goal was to have clear lung sounds, right, upon assessment within a week. So we can say, yes, our goal was met. At the end of the week, patient heard clear lung sounds throughout. Our second one was to have their O2 greater than 95 by the end of the shift. And we can say, yes, goal was met. The patient had an O2 of 96% because that would be our proof on room air by the end of my shift. And again, you can kind of make it up because these patients aren't real. So that was my video on how to make a care plan on your vSIM patient step by step. What I'll do is in the description box, I will simplify it and just do step one, step two, step three, that kind of a thing. Not with examples like I did here, but just so you have an idea of like, okay, wait, what do I do? What's the format? So you have that available to you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If not, I'll see you on the next one.